Hi, I'm Kimberly Tan, and today I'll be talking to you about the virtual DOM. Um, we'll be talking about what the DOM is, why manipulating it is less than optimal, um, what the virtual DOM is as an idea, what the virtual DOM is as, an I as implemented by React, um, their diffing and or reconciliation algorithm, and we'll take a peek at the source code. So the DOM stands for Document Object Model, and it's a standardized programming interface where the whole HTML document is represented as a tree structure. And each node on the tree represents an HTML element on that document. It's what connects JavaScript to HTML and allows web pages to render and respond to user events. And as you know, nodes can be manipulated directly in classic web development using things like document.getElementById, but it kind of sucks. Um, Um, and the creator of jQuery agrees with that. But it's not just the manipulation of the DOM nodes that's inefficient, it's what happens in the browser's workflow after the manipulation, and that's where the bottleneck is. So I think there's sometimes a misunderstanding for um, why we say we use the virtual DOM. Um, a knee-jerk answer for that is the DOM is inefficient, but it's more that updating the DOM is inefficient, and the the rendering that happens after the DOM node is manipulated is um, what holds things up. So the DOM tree itself is constructed by the rendering engine, which in Chrome is WebKit, um, once it parses the HTML and applies the CSS to the render tree. So every time that you change a node, there are all these things that need to happen. There's parsing and rendering layout before the render tree is finally painted to the browser. And so if you're going to change 30 nodes, re-rendering is going to be super slow because all these things need to happen for each node. And when there's a change in state, the browser needs to consider other things, like what parts of the tree to re-render, how in large sections, or just the parts that need it. So this is the problem that the virtual DOM solves. Instead of rendering all these changes to the real DOM, we apply them first to the virtual DOM which doesn't get rendered in real life, so changes to it are really cheap. So you can think of it as editing a blueprint rather than rebuilding the whole building. Um, and the virtual DOM will also batch changes together for efficiency. So what is a virtual DOM? It's just a tree data structure of plain JavaScript objects, that's all. It's a lightweight representation and exists in memory. It's never actually rendered. And the idea was popularized by React, but it's also used by other frameworks like Angular 2 and Vue, which have their own implementations. So how does React's virtual DOM work? On the initial render, JSX will tell the template compiler how to construct the DOM tree. Um, the virtual DOM tree. And then through another process, that virtual DOM is rendered to the real DOM. So when you're calling React DOM.render, you're building that virtual DOM tree in memory. And you can think of it as when you're calling um, the render function in a component, you're rendering each of those nodes in that virtual, in that virtual tree. Um, and something interesting is that React can render this virtual tree into different kinds of environments and not just target the real DOM, it can, it can render to um, other canvases, for instance, int into an iOS or Android view, like in React Native. So um, when, in, when the app is updated, usually by um, calling set state, the tree is rebuilt completely. Um, and so at any given point, there are two virtual trees that exist in memory at the same time. And this sounds wasteful, but it's not because React elements are cheap. Um, and React will compare the two trees and map the differences between them, and then it'll reconcile those differences, create a patch, and then render the changes to the real DOM. And it uses a diffing algorithm to find the minimum number of operations necessary to update the real DOM, and it batches the changes the updates together so that for every life cycle, the DOM is only repainted once. So um, how does their reconciliation work? So 
this, this problem of finding the minimum number of modifications is an O of n to the third complexity problem. But React uses a heuristic to approximate it, that's O of n. And it does that by relying on two assumptions. The first assumption is that two elements of different types will produce different trees. So when it's diffing two trees, React will first compare two root elements. If the root elements have different types, React tears down the old tree with all its children nodes and builds a new one from scratch. Um, so by different, by different element types, I mean if you change a div to a span, it will re-render everything that's in that subtree. Um, it'll mark it as dirty and then re-render that part. Um, it traverses the tree breadth first, level by level, so that a node isn't added to the update list if one of its parents needs to be updated, but it'll replace the entire subtree. And the second assumption is that um, the developer can hint at what child elements might be stable across renders with a key. And so if you, of course, have encountered this warning about you need to specify your key and it needs to be unique, this is why. Um, for instance, if you had a list with Karen and John and you inserted Omri at the beginning of that list, without a key, React would render each, each element in that list because it wouldn't know um, whether or not they were the same. But when you add a key, which is stable, predictable, and unique, it knows that it doesn't need to re-render all of it and just needs to insert Omri at the beginning. Um, and if you labeled your keys in an unstable way, like using math.random, um, React could get really mad and um, you might lose some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so don't do that. <laughs> um, so here's a peek at um, the, the reconciler and the source code. Um, and this is a part um, that's particularly um, interesting because it's related to that last point about keys. Um, it's the update children method. And so here React loops through next children, um, which is the new set of children. And then for each child, it'll check whether there is an old child from previous children that has the same key as the new child. And if no key is provided, it checks the position. Um, and if there's no new child with the same key as the old one, it'll call unmount on the old child. And if there's no, new, no old child with the same key as the new child, it'll mount the new one. And if they're children with the same key, it'll call should update React component to decide what to do next. Um, so what's next? Um, and that's React Fiber, which is a rewrite of React's reconciliation algorithm. And it came out earlier this summer. Um, and so instead of traversing the DOM recursively, breadth first, it uses a new data structure that's called a fiber, um, which is just a plain JavaScript object which keeps track of um, parent-child relationships in a singly linked list. So, and, and the key, like the hallmark feature of it is something called incremental rendering or scheduling. So right now in React, an entire subtree will be re-rendered completely immediately on an update. But with scheduling, um, this allows the work to be broken up into chunks and changes to be committed only when they're ready so that Fiber can prioritize the stuff that it, it deems more important, like um, responding to an update for animation over less important things, like just updates that occur in the background. Um, and here are some more resources if you would like to learn more. Thank you.